I get a beer review on an old beer that goes back quite a ways with me and a lot of people actually in New York State. Genesee Cream Ale. And if you've ever had this beer or more, you, well, you already have your own opinion of it. If you grew up in New York State and drank beer, you probably have your own opinion of it as well. And they uh, relate to some of the things I'm going to say. Um, first, I want to put my hat on, my beer review hat. And light my beer review candle. And give a little background information on the beer, a little bit of trivia too on it as well that some of you may not be aware of. Genesee Cream Ale. Um, this, Jenny's website says this beer has been made since 1960. And before Jenny Cream Ale in the 1940s, they had what they called light cream ale, which they discontinued and this took its place. Um, the beer is 5.2% alcohol. It's an ale, it's made with a top fermenting yeast. And uh, it's a peculiar type, it's kind of a, its own type of ale, cream ale. It's uh, very easy to drink, um, full-bodied kind of, it does go down smooth, at least what I remember. I haven't had this, you know, in a while, really. Um, it's brewed in Rochester, New York, and I can tell you the Genesee River runs, I think, through that area and through my area, actually, Auburn's not too far from me. And such. Um, well, I hope I don't screw up the geography on this. But uh, I had an Indian friend, or have an Indian friend, fellow I've drank quite a few beers with, by the way, in recent years. And he grew up on a reservation around here, and he used to always tell me when we were drinking beer, it's not Genesee. He said, it's Ganazi. The Indians, Genesee's an Indian name for the river, Genesee River, but it's Ganazi. And so there's a little trivia for you. Few people know, unless you drank with my friend Randy or, I'll open this in a bit, or you're an Indian, or you speak Indian, Iroquois, Ganazi cream ale. Uh, what else about this beer? I drank it when I was a teenager. I, when I was a teenager, part of my teen years, I lived in Sodas Point which is up on the lake shore, the American side of Lake Ontario, about 20 miles from Rochester. And at that point, um, they had Genesee, had their malt house in Sodas Point. And it was still open, still in business. Um, great big silos full of grain and a giant wood trestle used to go out, way out into the bay where ships would unload um, all that barley malted to be malted in the malt house. And that's long gone. I remember the trestle burned down. That was quite, a, it was made out of wood. That was quite a uh, ordeal a long time ago. But I remember all that. So when I was a teenager, my beer drinking friends and myself, we drank Genesee cream ale and Jenny regular beer because we felt we were being local, you know, supporters of our local brewery. Uh, well, at any rate, I didn't think a whole lot of it back then, and I've tried it off and on through the years, and still not really the type of beer I'd want to drink for different reasons I'll get to. My youngest son, who is of legal drinking age in New York State, drinks this, him and his girlfriend, and they tell me it's good beer. He's telling me it's actually bitter. It's, you can really taste the hops in it. And I don't remember that at all. It was, used to be just swill. And this beer cost a little under $10 for a 12-pack at my local uh, modern market. So it's it's pretty, it, it's a cheap beer. Plain and simple, it's a cheap beer. And they changed the can up in recent years because that's this is a new can design. But have they actually changed the beer? That my son tells me it's actually a very hoppy, good beer and um, let's see if it's the same old swill that I remember or not. 
so all right. looks the same. <laughs> I can't believe I'm drinking this stuff. It's not a bad beer. I don't know. Let's see if it's the same beer. I, I'm pretty sure it is. He doesn't go back as far as I do with this beer. Well, it looks the same. Maybe this candle's making it look kind of magical. That's how it looks on my end. What a bad beer, really. Um, all right, let's get to it. Well, I wanted to say something about these mugs. Um, in my last beer review, I talked about how I like to I like hand blown glass. And I like to, you know, keep an eye out for that unique, one-of-a-kind, handmade beer mug like this. You know, it's got the pottle on the bottom where they snap the glass off when they blew it. And this, too, has a pontle on the bottom. And I'm not going to tip it up or I'll dump the beer on myself to show you. This Windsor Tankard by Simon Pierce out of Vermont. What I want to say about these is... If you get yourself a handmade, hand-blown glassware, uh, which, honestly, I recommend if you're going to actually kind of look at your beers and stuff, um, do not put them in hot water. Don't put them in a dishwater washer. Don't put them in hot dish water, for that matter. They run a very high risk of breaking. Um, and I've had, it's just like $40 or $50 beer mug. I mean, they don't make these anymore. He discontinued them, probably for the reason I'm saying, because they're prone to break. They're prone to crack right here. They don't break. They just get a little shatter, a little crack. And that's because a uh, little glass, what my understanding is, you know, it's obviously two pieces of glass and the handle's attached. So he would blow the, the mug with molten hot glass. And then he'd take a piece of, the glass, the molten hot glass here, and attach it on the handle. That all works just fine, obviously. But the problem is, there are two different temperatures. When this glass, the handle connects with this glass, they're not the same temperature. So where they fuse creates a little situation of like a molecular instability within the glass, which is not a big deal usually. Um, but if you put them in hot water, uh, and you make a booboo -boo and put them in hot water, leave them in the hot water and let it cool. Don't do like I did a couple of times before I figured it out. Put them in hot water and then take them out and rinse them with cold water. Then you could actually hear where it cracks. Because it creates a bit of a molecular instability where the two pieces meet because they weren't the same temperature when they fused. So wash your, your glassware like that's handmade, especially, well, especially if they've got an attached handle to it. Uh, cold water only, really, or warm water. Definitely not hot to cold, or you're going to lose your mug. Good chance of it. Just wanted to put that out there. To the beer. Is it the same swill I remember, or as, it, as my son insists it is, a different beer that they improved? Uh, improved, that is, you know, per taste, whatever. He said it was hoppy. I don't remember the hoppy. Well, it smells the same. It smells like dishwater. Let's start. Now, you, you smell the malt. I don't smell any hops at all. So, all right, here we go. Well, hold on. Let me check the temp. I just want to do this because I'm trying to figure out, you know, so I get better at guessing the temperature on beers. All right, I just want to... Meat thermometer with the baked potato washed off of it. 45 degrees. Right. 43 degrees. Fahrenheit. Obviously. 43 degrees. It 
is the same beer. Sorry, Kyle. This is the same beer. Hands down. It's got that distinctive Ginny Cream Ale swill taste to it. Um, all right. It's the same beer. But what can I tell you about how this beer is? It's easy to drink. Very full-bodied. But yet, yeah, easy to drink. Um, it is an ale, cream ale. I looked it up. It is top fermented, so it is an ale. But it's there's not much hops in it that I can even pick up, honestly. Not much, really, to speak of. You might like it. It is definitely different. Uh, it's definitely different. It's not anything. Now I'm stuck with a 12-pack of this stuff. Um, right. Oh, well. Man, that takes me back a few years. Oh, we used to drink this when I was a teen. And I'll tell you a story about this. I used to read Easy Rider uh, Biker Magazine. You know, like, like Harley kind of biker magazine. I drive a motor, I ride a motorcycle, but I ride an enduro. Um, I don't have a Harley. Um, I didn't ride it too much. Well, I did ride it a lot at the beginning of the year, but I haven't ridden it lately. I should get out on it tomorrow. Get out to the woods. That's what it's good for. Uh, yeah, so I was reading, reading this magazine, Easy Rider, a long time ago. And there was like a blog where people submitted what the stinkiest smell they could come up with. What are their what was their experience with the worst smell they ever smelled? And I remember this this person submitted their experience with the worst stink they ever had occurred to them was uh, they must have been from New York State because they referenced this beer. And this guy wrote and he said he was in a bar. And the bar owners had a English bulldog. And back in those days, like, I don't know if some of you remember, like the old time bars. Up on the bar, behind the bar, they'd have these great big jars filled up with bar food, you know, which would be pickled eggs, sometimes pig knuckles, pickled, and uh, usually hot sausage pickled in these jars. And, um... He said that they were giving this dog pickled eggs, the English Bulldog, pickled eggs, and feeding it. It was drinking Ginny Cream Ale. And it, some dogs will drink a lot of beer. And so a horse, I've had a horse that drank beer, or my friend's horse drank beer like crazy, if you give it to him. And that dog got flatulence and a bulldog fart. Bulldog farts. And the dog's been putting down Ginny Cream Ale and pickled eggs. And this guy said it cleared the whole bar out. Everybody had to leave the building. It was that bad. I thought that was funny. Sorry. But that's what I got to say about this beer. I, I think I, I've got to give it five stars. Uh, not because I particularly like this beer. Not the worst beer I've ever had. It's very, I give it five stars for a couple of things. Five stars for me because this beer goes back to my teen years with me and all my friends that I grew up with and family have all you know, learned their lesson with this stuff. I'll give it five stars because it's cheap. That's a plus for me. And uh, five stars for its ability to induce legendary flatulence. And it's a good thing I live alone with my dog right now. Because as far as he's concerned, I got basset hounds, as you know. The stinkier, the better with this dog. No problem. Yeah. Ginny Cream Ale. What else can I say about this beer? It's filling. It's a heavy beer. You know, you're not going to drink a lot of it. And it just comes to mind with me is, uh, it just gives you this wicked gas. 
Yeah. You're in for a treat tomorrow, buddy. Puppy. Come here, pal. Come here, buddy. Want some queen ale? How about some queen ale, buddy? He won't. He won't. Drink. My dog does not drink beer. <laughs> All right. Um, I give it five stars just for that. It's unique. I give it five stars for its uniqueness. And again, it's this is the same swill that I remember as a teenager. And I have tried it off and on through the years because it's cheap. It's local for me. And uh, it's very cheap. And I don't know. I like my favorite colors are green and gold together. Or green and yellow. But I like the beer can. I like the color green quite a bit. Um, why else would I drink it? Well, my son, this, he kept insisting that this is good beer, that it's, uh, that he could taste the hops in it. And I, I don't taste any hops in this at all. But I told him I'd give it a try and I'd post a review on it. So my next beer review is going to be um, on Genesee Black, which I have not had. And my nephew, who lives out in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, actually, you know, he's the one that asked me if I had the Genesee Black. And I said no. And I said I'll try it and post a review on it. So, um, my next story, 49. I've actually got to talk to a lawyer before I do story 49. Because in story 49, I was living in the woods, about 200 miles away from here, and a bunch of things happened. Um, but I had a, a clairvoyant episode where a spirit of a woman um, led me to her grave in the woods. And this is private property. Uh, it's, it's not it's not public land and I dug a little at her grave enough to know that I was at a somebody's well, I'll get into that when I tell the story but um I got to find out the legal ramifications of telling on the world wide web that I believe there's a body buried illegitimately um on somebody's property you know I don't, I don't want to get myself in trouble or cause any problems for whoever owns the property. But, you know, I believe in getting it all out there. And I'm going to if I'm, find that I can do this uh, legally without setting myself up for legal problems. I'm going to give out the location of where this is because I felt she wanted to be found, honestly. And I started digging and came to her parts of a woman's dress, glasses, and other things, things there. And I knew that I, if I dug any deeper, I'd hit bones. So I kind of weirded out and left. And I'll tell that story. There were some other things there too. But I got to find out, um, I got to talk to a lawyer because I'm going to, I'm going to tell exactly where this is at, you know? And she looked like, judging from her clothes, clothes, some of the items, um, like horn rim glasses, I'd say she was buried there probably around 1960 or so. And this is out in the middle of nowhere. And there's there were some other things there that, that were very, very uh, peculiar, kind of weird, psycho. Was, eh. So I'm going to tell story 49. And in part of story 49, actually, you want to ramp up the weirdness level. I told you I was saving this for last. So I only have a couple more of these stories. You know, things keep happening to me. I'll post them, but you know, it's going to come to an end at some point. I'm not doing this for money. Uh, I also had a first encounter with what they call Bigfoot in that area. Whitehall's Bigfoot. And I'll tell of that too. And and I did the dumbest, one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. Um, tried to go swimming in a mountain stream. 
Beware of mountain streams. I'll tell you, the water may look okay on the surface. As soon as I set foot in that stream, I knew I was in trouble, and I was. And there's some kind of weird things that happened there too, of course. But just going back to when I was like 27 years old. So, but, I don't know, I hope you're all doing all right. 2020 has been a peculiar year in so many ways. Uh, a valley of testing, you know, with the pandemic and this thing with the election. I'm, I don't get political in these, but I am a Trump I support Trump. I'm a conservative without getting into it. And uh, right now when I'm posting this, you know, it looks like he's going to lose, but it's still kind of iffy. I'm all right. I'm okay with it. I accept whatever. I said my prayers to God, you know, Lord, may your hand be on this nation and on the election. You know what I want to happen, but it's not up to me. And I cast my vote, and I'll leave it there, you know? We'll see what happens. Uh, between the pandemic and the politics and personally in my life, uh, and just about everybody I know has things going on in their personal lives that are testing. It's been a trying year for a lot of people. And some people have died from this pandemic. I actually know people that have lost family from it. And in my part of New York, it's starting to make its rounds finally through upstate New York. And the first time when COVID hit in spring of 2000, or 2020, I mean, um, it, yeah, I'm sorry, it kind of skipped upstate New York for the most part. It just kind of hit the New York City area. But now it's making its way upstate. And I thought I had it last week. I might have had it, actually. I was pretty sick. And just upper respiratory, upset stomach. And it, I don't know. Who knows? But I feel all right now. So where am I going with this? I don't know. This is a beer review. Yeah, get yourself some of this. And uh, while you're at it, you know, grab yourself an extra roll of toilet paper because you're going to need it for the next day if you drink the whole thing. You don't mind, you know, burning a hole in your underwear with the with the flatulence this will put on you. Go for it. Your dog will love you for it. Not your partner or your family. Yes, yeah, I'm getting pretty stupid. Um, is there anything else? No, I can't think of anything. Just uh, y'all hang in there, you know. Not really about the beer review for me. It's I like to connect with people. I'm not doing this for money. Um, this is just kind of a hobby. Plus, a, I'm socializing kind of this way and just something for me to do. But I think everybody is going through a heck of their own heck of a year. Hang in there. You know, we get through this. And it's like everything else in life. You come out through the other side stronger, more refined, um, improved. And it's like I told somebody just recently when I, like I just said, I thought I had COVID. Honestly, I was kind of really sick. And so I was kind of telling people, hey, you might want to stay away for a while. I'm not sure what's going on with me. You know, got some symptoms. And uh, I'm not worried about it. I said to if I have COVID, I'm going to do what we used to call when I was an infantryman, you know, and you're get your positions getting overrun. Your instructions are to dip, D-I-P. What's that? It means you're going to die in place. You just stay right where you're at. You either live or you die. You don't, you're not going anywhere. And that's what I said. I'm just going to just, whatever, either outcome is good for me. I'm either going to get through it. And live a little longer, whatever the Lord has for me, or I'm going to die in place, and then I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to go on a trip. So either way, it's a favorable outcome for me. Just the same, I don't want to catch it. And I certainly don't want to give it to anybody. So I'm pretty sure that the flatulence that this beer induces 
Well, I'm not pretty sure, but I suspect that the flatulence that this beer induces will kill COVID-19. So there you go. No doubt. Yeah. All right, thank you. Just kind of impromptu, sorry. Triple with the mic. <laughs>